Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com, and are you ready to rumble? No, just kidding, we're not going to rumble. We're not going to rumble. I actually said that to a high school class once, big mistake, because they rumbled. All right, so we're not going to rumble, but we are going to do lesson number 18 in our most excellent new and improved Arduino tutorial series. And today, I need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. That is black, strong coffee over ice. No sugar, none needed. And I need you to get out your most excellent eLego Super Starter Kit for the Uno R3 projects. What? You don't have one? Look down in the description. Click on the link. Order one. 35 bucks. Hook a brother up. All of our lessons are based on this eLego kit, and it has got a boatload of components and therefore we can really go in and learn a lot. All right, what I need you to do is for lesson number 18. Oh yeah, let me tell you what lesson number 18 is. Lesson number 18 is how to read data from the serial monitor. And if you think of what we've done so far, we've like read values from a potentiometer and then done something with an LED. But a lot of times what you might need is you might need a number from the keyboard, like how bright, it, you might want to know like how bright do you want the LED, or you might want to know how many times do you want to blink the LED. You need to get data from the user, you do that through the serial monitor, and then the Arduino can go off and do something based on what you told it to do. So the Arduino can listen to commands that you get from the serial monitor, and so we are going to do that. <clears throat> to start with, I'll show you what you need out of your kit. I will get out of your way. You need your breadboard. You need your Arduino. You need the red LED, red. You can, if you want, substitute yellow. Don't use blue. Don't use green. Those are for special occasions. And then a 330 ohm 330 ohm current limiting resistor. All right, now we are going to come over here and we are going to start coding. Let's look at this window here. I kind of like. <clears throat> so how do we get input from the serial monitor? Well, we got to start by setting up our variables. So what I want to do is I want to get a number from the user. I want to get a number, so I've got to set up a variable. I'll just call it my number, and then I'm not going to put a value in it. Why am I not going to put a value in it? I am not going to put a value in it because you're going to read that from the serial monitor. I'm just setting it up, and then I'm not using any pins right now, so I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just getting a number, my number. We'll come back in a minute, and we'll add more variables as we need them, but what do we know we're going to do? Well, if we're going to read from the serial port, we've got to turn it on, so serial.begin, and our most trusty old standby, 9600, and then, uh, you know, old guys like me, we use 9600 as a baud rate, because back in the day, you were always like, you know, you had flaky connections, so you had to kind of go slow, or things would mess up, so us old guys kind of use these lower numbers. Your new guys, you just go right to the fat, 115,200 or whatever. We go a little bit slower just because we can. Okay, well, so we start the serial monitor. Now, what is it that we want to do? We want to read a number from the serial monitor. In order to do that, you've got to do three things. <clears throat> the first thing is you have to ask for it. Once you've asked for it, you have to wait. And then after you've waited, you have to read. And so I'm going to say this over and over and over. To get data from the serial port, you got to do three things. What three things? Ask, wait, read. So let's start with ask. We're going to need a message. So I'm going to say string. I'm going to create, not sting, string. I'm going to create a string variable called msg for message. And what is it? It is going to be the message we send them. Please <clears throat> enter your number and then end it with a quote and a semicolon. All right, so what three things do we do to get input from the user through the serial monitor? Ask, wait, read. The first one is ask. So we are going to do a serial dot print, serial dot print, 
serial.println that will send a message to the user. What message do we want to send? The one we just came up with, msg. All right. So what three things do we do? Ask, wait, read. How many of those have we done? One. We have asked. Okay. This is the problem, guys. Uh, the computer is so fast. If I just do ask and then read, it's going to be ask, read, and you didn't give a person a time to put their answer in. So you say, well, put a delay in there. All right. If you ask grandpa to enter a number, it might take him five minutes because he might be looking for his reading glasses or something. So you say, okay, we need to put a delay of five minutes. No, because junior, he can enter it real quick, like a second. So you see, some people could input things quickly. Some people could input things slowly. So the problem is, how long do you want to wait? Well, the answer is you want to wait until there's data on the serial port. So how do we do that? Well, we create a while loop. So we're going to while, we're going to loop, we're going to loop on what condition? Well, while serial, <coughs> serial dot available, and then open close parentheses, while serial dot available equal equal zero. <coughs> Remember, in a conditional, we have to use two equal sign. If we just said while serial dot available equal zero, we would be writing a zero. We would be making serial dot available equal zero. We don't want to do that. We want to check and see. So what this is saying is while serial dot available equal equal zero, what do we want to do? While serial dot available equal equal zero, while there is no data on the serial port, we should do absolutely nothing. So we don't put anything in this while loop. The purpose of this while loop is just to hang your program until the person enters the data and sends it. And then when they send it, then serial dot available is no longer zero. And then you will drop out of the while loop and come right here. So to read data, what three things do we do? We ask. We did that here. We what? We wait. And then we do what? We read. This is how you read. What was our variable up here? <coughs> our variable was my number. My number is equal to, now we want to go out and read the number off of the serial port. We do that with the most excellent command, serial dot parse int, open close parentheses. That will go out once the data is there. We waited in the while loop. Then once it sees data, it drops down here and it goes and gets the number. So my number is equal to serial dot parse int. Now, what do we do? Well, we should print it probably, and we should probably say serial.println, and then we should do some nice uh, thing here. We can say uh, string, and we could call it message2, and message2 is going to be your number is like that. OK. And we will do a print instead of a print line because we want this all on one line. So we'll say serial dot print message two like that. And then serial dot print ln. Why? Because after this one, we want to go to the next line. And so we will print what? My number like that. All right. A very, very important part. I need you all to hold your breath, so hopefully this will compile. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Boom! Look at that. All right, it compiled. I need to go to a different view that will allow you to see the serial monitor. I believe this will allow you to see the serial monitor. And then I'm going to pop open that serial monitor. Ah, look at that. Boom. It's asking me for my number. What number do I want? 23. Do you see how I type 23 in the little window? And then you can either click send or you can click uh, or you can click enter on the keyboard or you can click send. 
You see, the program's not doing anything. What is it doing? It's waiting on me. It's waiting on the data. It is waiting for me to come up and click send. And then look, your number is 23. How marvelous. And now it's ready to play again. What is your number? My number is 12. Enter. Your number is 12. Boom. That is really exciting. Do you guys see the power that this gives us? This gives us the power to get our wishes into the Arduino. So you don't have to program it in. You don't have to go and change the program and put it in the program because if a user is using this, he's not going to know how to program. You want him to interact with the program through the serial monitor. All right, guys, <clears throat> let's build our circuit really quick and I will come over here. So you can see the circuit bigger. I just need you to hook up this red LED really quick. You should be good at this now. So I am going to go quickly. I'm going to put my current limiting resistor from column 20 or column 10 to column 15. <clears throat> then I'm going to connect the left leg, my left, I'm never sure what it is to you, but the left leg to me of the current limiting resistor into pin 12 this time, pin 12, and then the long leg of the resistor is connected to the right, the long leg of the LED is connected to the right leg of the resistor. Long leg always needs to be going back towards the positive, and sometimes these things don't want to go in. Okay, the LED is in. Now I need to ground the LED by hooking to the right leg of the LED, and we go back to GND. All right, and that was pin 12. Okay, so let's look at a practical example of how we would want to do this. Let me come back over to here, and ah, oh, most excellent. Uh, actually, I think I can use this window. All right, so let's keep this code that we just did, and let's just modify it. What I want is, I want to blink the LED, but I don't want to program in it how many times to blink. I want the user to select how many times he wants to blink the LED. And so uh, on message, I'm going to change it to how many blinks do you want? All right, and then I probably don't need this message number two. And now on my number, I want a better variable than that. I'm going to say num blinks, num blinks. Okay, now I would, I want to get from the user how many times he wants to blink. In order to do that, I need to do what? Three things, what three things? Ask, wait, read. So I'm going to ask by serial print lining message. And that is how many blinks do you want? Now what do I do? I wait. I wait until when? I wait until he answers the question. Then this is going to be num blinks that I am going to read from the serial monitor. And now I'm not going to print a message. What am I going to do? I am going to blink the LED. And we are going to do that with a what kind of loop? A for loop. So we are, <coughs> excuse me. I'm becoming somewhat parched. Ah, okay, so we're going to put a for loop, four, and I am going to need a little loop counter up here, so I'm going to say int j like this, and then I will come down for j equal one, and I keep looping as long as j is less than or equal to num blinks and then ah, not yet and then j equal j plus one every time through i will increment j and then i open that clause hit enter and it automatically puts the close clause in and now what do i want to do in here i want to blink the led up ah, i better come up with another variable up here int and then I'll just make it easy. BT blink time is equal to, let's say, 500, like that. And then how do I blink? Well, one blink would be, let me do a digital right. I, I better put a pin in, and I am working on pin 12. So I better come up and put a variable in of int is red. 
uh, red pin is equal to 12 because the red LED is hooked to that. So I'm going to digital write red pin high. Okay. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to delay, delay, delay how long? Blink time. And now I'm, uh, 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 then I'm going to digital write <clears throat> red pin and then I'm going to go low and then I'm going to delay blink time like that. Yes. So every time through the loop it's going to turn the red LED on. It's going to wait, turn it off and wait. And then how many times does it blink? Num blinks. Where does num blinks come from? Num blinks comes from the user. How do we get data from the user? We ask, wait, read. Does this make sense? Okay, so this is I will need you all to hold your breath to hope that this works. I will need to come back over here so you can see the serial monitor. But remember, hold your breath. Here we go. Oh, darn it. What did I do wrong? Oh, man, I hope you guys were screaming at me. You don't use a comma. You use a semicolon to separate these things, okay? Now, the real reason is somebody didn't hold their breath. So let's hold our breath this time. Boom! It worked. Well, at least it compiled. So now let's open up the serial monitor and see what happens. How many blinks do you want? All right. I want four blinks. Hmm. I put in four. What is Arduino doing? It's waiting for me to hit send. Hmm. You see, I'll have a cup of coffee, a little sip of coffee. I'll stretch. And now Grandpa will hit send and be watching this over here. Okay, I'll hit send. And one, two, three. Huh. The LED is barely blinking. It is so... Ah. I just spilled my coffee. Look at this. It is so dim. You can barely see it. Let me try this again. How many blinks do you want? I want four blinks. Do you see that? It is so dim you can barely see it. Huh. This is called troubleshooting. Something isn't working in our program. The LED is barely blinking. So, what are some things that could be wrong? Well, one thing that could be wrong is the LED could be bad. So let's troubleshoot. I'm going to take the LED out and I'm going to try putting in a yellow LED. And then let's see what happens. Okay. Let's put in a yellow LED. And then let's try it again. I'll call up the serial monitor. And I want four blinks. And then I click send. Okay, you see, you can't even see it. You can't even see it. So, what do you think? Let me try putting this in again. And I do have it in the right direction. The, the long leg is going towards the... Ah! The long leg is going towards the positive voltage. And so let me try it again and see if it's going to work. I'm going to put in four. You see, it's so dim. Okay, I wonder if the LED is bad. Well, what I could do is I could take this and I could hook it directly up to five volts. And look at that. It's very bright. So what did I just say? I just figured out that it is not the LED. The LED is working. If I hook it to five volts, it's working. What all does that tell me is working? That tells me the LED is working, the resistor is working, the wires are good, and all of my connections are good. And so why is it blinking so dim? If it's not the hardware, it must be the software. Hmm. I come over here and look. 
and I look at void setup, and what did we forget to do? We didn't do the pin modes. Ah, man, and I just spilt my coffee again. All right, we didn't do the pin modes, right? So I need to do pin mode, and then what do I need to do? Red pin is a what? Output. Did you guys catch that? You know, sometimes I do these things on purpose just to make sure that you are paying attention. Just to make sure that you were paying attention. So let's uh, download here. What do we need to do? Hold your breath. <sighs> Boom! All right, it worked. Okay, it worked. So let's call up our serial monitor. All right. How many times would you like to blink? I think I would like to blink four times. Now keep your eye on the LED while I hit enter and we get one, two, three. I don't want to see. Did that work? Let me see. Four. Let me watch it. Only blinked two times. What is wrong here? J is equal to one, num blinks. Ah, oh, look at that. Did you catch that? I said J is equal to J plus two. It should have been what? J is equal to J plus one. Do you notice how sometimes I put mistakes in just to see if you're paying attention? And also then you can see how we debug. You see it wasn't blinking the right number of times. So where did we go? We went to the for loop and we see that. So we are going to download. Okay, now we are going to open our serial monitor. Where did the serial monitor go? It's back there. Okay, how many times do you want to blink four? And I'm going to click enter, and then I've got one, two, three, four. Boom! And then what does it do? It comes back and asks me again, how many times do you want to blink? I want to blink three times this time. One, two, three. I am in control of my destiny. It is up to me how many times I want to blink the LED. Okay, does this uh, does this make sense? Let's do one more because we're on a roll here. Okay, uh, and this one won't have this one. We won't use the <clears throat> we won't use the LED on this one. So what we're going to do though is, uh, and I'll get rid of this. So what I'm going to, let's calculate, I mean, let's just do something different. Let's calculate the area of a circle, all right? And so all of a sudden now, what variable do I need? Well, one is the radius. Is the radius going to be a round number? No, the radius could be anything. So I'm going to call it a float because a radius could be an in-between number. So I'm going to say radius. And then do I put a value in here? No, because I'm going to get that from the user. And then... I'm going to say, what is the, the radius of your circle? Circle. What is the radius of your circle? And then <clears throat> I'm going to need a float for area, because we're going to calculate area, and that could be an in-between number, so that needs to be a float. So message is, what is the radius of your circle? And then I need another string, and that is going to be message 2, which is going to be equal to the message 2 that I'll send. Your circle has area of, and then like that, and then I'll put a space so that the space will be there and make a nice uh, a nice sentence. So I think that's good. So I'm not going to need this pin mode this time. And then what I'm going to do is serial print line message. What is message? What is the radius of your circle? And then what do I need to read? I need to uh, get rid of this for loop. All right. Now, what do I need to read? I need to read radius. Okay. But what you need to see here is <clears throat> you need to see that radius is a float. So if radius is a float, do I want to do serials, serial dot parse int? No. I want to do what? Serial dot parse. Can you guess? 
float. And what it gets the happy little orange color, meaning that it recognizes it. And then what can I do? I can say area is equal to, let's be good and let's make a new, make a new variable up here of float pi equals 3.14. All right. And then down here, area is equal to pi times radius times radius. Okay. And then serial dot print. And we're going to print message two. And then we're going to say serial dot print. And we are going to print area. All right. So let's see if this works. Please hold your breath this time. Oh, darn it. Float. Ah, right here. I didn't put the what colon. And you didn't hold your breath. So everyone, really, I need everyone to hold their breath. Yes. Okay. So now we will open the serial monitor. And then it says what? What is the area of your circle? My circle is area of two. Ah, look at that. I probably did a print where I needed a print line. You see how I ran those two together. So let's look. Oh yeah, I did the, I printed message two and then I printed area where that should have been print LN. Okay. I'm, we don't have to hold our breath this time. I know it's going to compile. I only do that when I'm not sure. All right. So now we're going to bring the serial monitor back. What is the area of your circle? Two. Okay. Your circle has an area of 12.56. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 something. That looks about right. But look, I can say 2.1. And then it will say your circle has an area of 13. Point Boom, this is working. Okay, what did we learn today? We learned to debug our code. We learned that if you don't do your pin mode, your LED is not going to light right. We learned how to read integers from the serial monitor. We learned how to read floats from the serial monitor. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Leave some comments down below. Okay, come on, give me some feedback. Are you guys following along? Am I rambling? Is this too long? Is this about right? Give me some feedback. And then think about subscribing to the channel. If you want notifications, make sure you ring the bell. By notifications, hit the little bell. Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.